Hey everyone, my name is Gavin and I love horror. Back before the days of streaming, we had to actually go to a building called a Blockbuster Video to rent a movie. Imagine the endless scrolling you do on Netflix, but the scrolling is you physically walking down aisles in hopes the movie you want to rent is still there. Video stores are a relative thing of the past, except for Family Video and that last blockbuster in Oregon, but walking down these aisles is where many horror fans fell in love with the genre. Even if you were too young to rent a movie, you could still be terrified by the box art, and if you were really brave, you'd actually look at the back of the box. Today, we're looking at some of the scariest horror movie box art of all time. This list is made up of universally beloved box art and some of my personal picks as well. Let's get to it. Number one, Stephen King's It. Starting things off with the heavy hitter, the box art for the ABC television adaptation of Stephen King's It is probably when most kids figured out they were terrified of clowns. The box does a great job of grabbing your attention with a white background, a stark contrast to the black and reds normally seen in the horror section. It shows off Tim Curry's Pennywise the Clown as an unsettling figure until that switches to pure terror as you realize, oh my god, that clown has claws. If you get too scared, just make prolonged eye contact with John Ritter, who's posing like he's in a different movie. He'll save you with them kisses. Stephen King's It was also so long it had to be spread across two VHS tapes, so you were destined to see this art because the box was dummy thick. Number two, Hellraiser. If you want to grab someone's attention into renting your movie, putting a guy with pins on his head holding a spooky Rubik's Cube while wearing bondage gear is a great start. Is this horror? Is it porn? Yes. The tagline on the box threatens to tear your soul apart and Pinhead is looking you dead in the eyes and daring you to rent his movie. And then once you do, you'll realize that he's only in the movie for like 10 minutes and the rest is soap opera bad. Oh, shut up. I don't care about dudes and tidy whities getting killed by a hammer if it's not done by Pinhead. Still a cool cover though. Number three, Ice Cream Man. The 80s and 90s were a fun time in which any holiday or career could become a horror movie. Ice Cream Man was a chance for ice cream men to get their due. I've never seen the film, but the cover is freaking out 33-year-old me. Seeing an ice cream cone with eyeballs and bugs in it is not very appetizing. Also, looking at Clint Howard under ideal circumstances is creepy. Is that too mean to say? It is. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave it in anyway. Still, Ice Cream Man looks like a lot of fun and it's currently streaming on Amazon Prime, so you really have no reason not to check it out. Number four, Jason Goes to Hell. Widely regarded as one of the worst Friday the 13th films, Jason Goes to Hell is no classic, but that didn't stop the box art from scaring me. Growing up religious bestowed upon me a deep fear of hell, so seeing anything with the moniker of Goes to Hell was horrifying. Up until this point, I'd only seen people go to camp or get scared stupid. There's no earnest Goes to Hell. I thought Jason Goes to Hell was going to be a Christian film, showing him being cast into a lake of fire or being judged by the Almighty. Instead, he's just a worm or something and gets reborn as a full-ass grown man. What? Jason Goes to Hell did inspire me to be a better person, though, because I assume actual hell just plays this movie on repeat to punish the wicked. Number five, Dead Alive. Before Peter Jackson directed those movies in New Zealand about the amazing race or whatever, he directed Splatterhouse classic Dead Alive. Or Brain Dead, if you were gonna leave a comment trying to correct me. I know my history. The art for the movie is truly terrifying with its depiction of someone pulling their mouth apart to show a little skelly boy inside. That's not where little skelly boys belong. I think what also makes this depiction so scary is that the skeleton has regular eyes. I'm used to them being hollowed out shells, not peeping those baby blues. It's a striking image that definitely had many renters seeing what the movie was about. It's crazy to think the same guy that did this would also go on to make the beloved and not at all drawn out Hobbit movies. Number six. The Lawnmower Man. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what this movie is actually about, aside from the 90s CGI, but undoubtedly, this was the movie that my local Premiere Video would try to get people to rent. Rest in peace, Premiere Video. Is it about a guy who's part lawnmower and part man? Is it about a lawnmower? I don't know. But after being bombarded with advertising, Lawnmower Man was the pinnacle of horror. The box art shows a dude pushing a lawnmower and a guy in that thing from the Space Camp commercials. And what's the church doing in the background? Is Kirk Cameron in this? I still can perfectly hear the voice on the video store TV saying, Lawnmower Man. And I think about it at least once a month, 25 years later. That's good marketing. 
One day I will watch Lawnmower Man, but until then it will remain the pinnacle of horror in my mind. Number seven, Ghoulies. Gremlins kicked off the genre of tiny creatures that also want to kill you movies, such as Critters, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and yes, Ghoulies. Ghoulies are what happened when your mom says you have Gremlins at home. While Critters went for a more horror approach, Ghoulies went for... gross. It's definitely a creepy cover that shows a ghoulie in a toilet, which is gross because that's where poop goes. Also, I gotta put my butt on that thing. I don't wanna get goosed by a ghoulie. Why you gotta be that way, butt ghoulie? If you or someone you know has contracted butt ghoulies, please seek immediate medical attention. Number eight, Evil Dead 2. Another entry in our series of skelly boys with human eyes, the Evil Dead 2 box art scared me as a kid. I used to avoid the horror aisle at all costs just to avoid making eye contact with the skeleton. The Dead by Dawn tagline didn't help either. The Evil Dead series would go on to become some of my favorite movies in the genre, but man, I was almost too scared to ever check them out because of the box art. A personal pet peeve of mine is when a horror movie shows something spooky on the box that never shows up in the movie. If you're going to scare me on the box, make sure it shows up in the movie so it can get its cub uppance. What I'm saying is, if I see you in real life, skelly boy. I'm throwing hands. Number nine, The Exorcist. We've established how scared I am at the idea of hell and demons, so The Exorcist was always going to scare me. The cover art is spooky, sure, but it's what the movie represents that terrify me. Would touching the box make me get possessed? Would I need an exorcist if I walked down the same aisle as the adventures of Reagan and her Catholic friend? The cover art could have just said The Exorcist with nothing else on it, and I would have peed a little. Oh, and the movie was allegedly cursed as well, so it was no bueno for me. I finally got to see The Exorcist in theaters a few years ago, and it wasn't nearly as scary as I had built it up in my mind, and I didn't get possessed. <laughs> Number 10, Faces of Death. This list wasn't in any order, but if it was, Faces of Death would be the top of box arts that scared everyone. The skull on the cover is iconic, and the grunge look of the box furthered the promotion of everything on the tape being 100% real. This was a real snuff film. You were going to see people die in horrible ways, and it was real. Just knowing this tape existed was enough to make even the bravest person second guess everything. Back then, this was the way to see snuff if you were looking for it. It wasn't like today when you just Google whatever horrible thing you want to see or get exposed to it by accident on TikTok. Ultimately, most of the stuff on the tape ended up being fake, but still, Faces of Death was the ultimate. I dare you to watch this. What box art scared you? Does any box art still scare you? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'll do another video. I'd like to thank those on the Facebook page for Gavin Loves Horror for leaving suggestions. Cameron, Maddie, and some others as well. Garrett, I see you. Thank you for leaving your suggestions. I truly, truly do appreciate that. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Leave a like for this video as it really does help me out. Until next time, stay weird.